I have not read this question or looked at this poem. I'm starting now. First thing I'm going to do is check the question. Read the following poem carefully. Write a well-organized essay in which you analyze how the poet uses language to describe the scene and to convey mood and meaning. Hold on one second. Okay. Language to describe, to convey mood and meaning. All right. Now, uh, so that's it. So I want to focus on language to describe the scene. Okay. Evening Hawk. From plane of light to plane, wings dipping through geometries and orchids that the sunset builds out of the peak's black angularity of shadow, riding the last tumultuous avalanche of light above pines and guttural gorge, the hawk comes. How he used languages. Okay, so to describe the scene, notice that we only see the hawk at the end, delayed subject. From plane to from plane of light to plane, wings dipping through geometries and orchids that the sunset builds. We've well, we've got what the hell? We've got planes. We've got wings. We've got sunset orchids. His wing skives down. His motion is out of a honed steel edge. The head of each stalk is heavy with the gold of our error. I don't get that line. Look, look. He is climbing the last light, who knows, neither time nor error, and under whose eye, unforgiving, the world, unforgiven, swings into shadow. Hawk seems to be like God to me. Unforgiving. Long now, the last thrush is still, the last bat now cruises in his sharp hieroglyphics. His wisdom is ancient, too, and immense. The star is steady, like Plato, over the mountain. If there were no wind, we might, we think, hear the earth grind on its axis, or history drip in darkness, like a leaking pipe in the cellar. Now we've shifted.
I think here the earth grind on its axis. Okay, now at this point, you know what? I have no idea what this poem is about any more than you do. I'm having a really hard time doing this this way. But it wouldn't have worked as well to do it with uh, pen and paper. I couldn't have filmed it as well. Sunset, orchids. So there's beauty there. But blackness. Avalanche. Okay, let me see now. The last thing I'm going to look at, wings dipping through, I'm just going to look for figures of speech here because the thing was mood. Damn it. S just describe the scene and convey mood and meaning. All right, so what is the mood here? I've looked over the poem. I've noticed that we've got we've got beauty there but it's tragic and dark. I, I need some... Damn! I need some examples of that. Um, Nature is sublime, holy, but merciless. And tragic. Life seems meaningless beyond the beauty and the terror. Now I'm going to look for any sort of figures of speech um, from plain wings dipping through geometries and orchids that the sunset builds. So sunset builds is personification. And since the sunset builds, n nature is a creator there, personified. Again, there's a religious aspect here, and it doesn't seem to be Christian. It seems to be naturalistic with all of the um, uncertainties and, and disappointments that brings to our hopes that death is not the end of all. His wing, for a wing to scythe, hold. 
Hawk is the Grim Reaper. You know about the Grim Reaper, right? He's death, and he comes with his scythe, um, cutting down lives like peasants cut down uh, grains of wheat. I don't understand line 10, so I'm not going to... I might just say line 10, mysterious, sad, but golden. Look, look, he is climbing. <laughs> There's a childish wonder there. Excitement. Look, look, he is climbing the last light. Who knows neither time nor error? And under whose eye? Who being the, uh, the hawk? Unforgiving. The world. Unforgiven. Repetition. Unforgiven world. Wings in the shadow. He is climbing in uh, the last light, and who knows me, and under whose eye, unforgiving, the world swings in the shadow. The unforgiven world swings into shadow. Swings is cool there somehow. Picture the world under the hawk's eye swinging into shadow. I won't use cool when I write my essay, but long now the last thrush is still okay so mood changes with 10 11 12 13 14 line 14 still Wise. The owl is suddenly important. Like Plato. The owl is an allusion to Minerva's wisdom. The owl, the owl of wisdom, flies at midnight. You don't know that. That's where readers do know things like this. There's an old Greek saying, the owl of wisdom flies at midnight. And that just shows that, that wisdom only comes at the end of life, not early in the beginning. The star is steady like Plato over the mountain. The star, again, still, steady, like Plato. So again, wisdom. And that wisdom is acceptance, I think. Resignation. If there were no wind, we might. So the mood changes again. Last stanza. We enter the poem. We're already there with look, look, but w we might, we, th we might, we think, hear the earth grind on its axis. Where history drip in the darkness. Again, for history, human history. <sighs> A broken pipe dripping in the cellar of the universe. Hmm. Okay, that's as much as I've got right there. So, all right, I did that in 14 minutes. It would not have taken me that long if I had been able to write. So now I'm going to stop this and I'm going to write my paper.